let's understand what equilibrium is. An example is the Duffing equation I showed you before. So what happens in Duffing equation, you start any place. The flow goes on for a while, does something, does something, does something, does something, does something, and it stops. Now being deterministic, flow it actually cannot cross itself, so my figure was somewhat wrong. It's pretty boring, except it turns out that when you think about it, even that flow is not so boring because if I start, you know, slightly off this trajectory someplace else, I might find out that actually I turn this way and then I start spiraling and I fall into this hole. So even having just two attractive equilibrium fixed points produces somewhat interesting dynamics. But two-dimensional dynamics, that's basically all that happens. Either you fall into the hole or you run away, run away, or maybe you run on a cycle, so that's called a limit cycle. And if you learn your nonlinear dynamics in book by Strogatz, that's basically what that book will do for two-thirds of the time, you will study what happens in two dimensions. It can be interesting because it has interesting neuro, physiological, biological, etc. applications. But motion, motion will be essentially rather simple if you're interested in what happens in long time. That, that was an equilibrium. Now what's a periodic orbit? In case of a periodic orbit, you start someplace, sometime later you're someplace else, sometimes later you're someplace else again. Then, you know, third time I look at my clock, I'm there, but then, miraculously, after time t, the period, I am exactly back. Now, because system is deterministic, if I'm back exactly, then I'll just keep doing the same thing. So what periodic orbit is good for is that once I have a periodic orbit, I have infinite time future under control, at least for set of points on that orbit, because they'll be there forever. And that's why there will be actually our bridge into the distant future. But there is a problem with periodic orbits. And the problem is, and you'll start appreciating it very soon, if I start just a little bit off, then what I'll discover is that for a while I'll behave, because the flow is smooth, I'll behave like the flow, but then I'll run away and do something totally different and complicated. That will be a typical situation. Uh, so, these periodic orbits are exactly recurrent, but they're very fragile. You know, they're zero measure in the state space. They're just very special points that return. Almost everybody doesn't exactly return. So, you might think that's hopeless, these periodic orbits, because everything looks Ergodic. Ergodic means that you visit every neighborhood uh, with some probability. Smaller the neighborhood, smaller the probability, but you visit them all. That will be an ergodic system. Generically, orbits are unstable, meaning the nearby orbits do something quite different, some finite time after, and it all looks totally uncontrollable. Our strategy will be to figure out the geometry of chaos in the following way. Populate that space with compact invariant sets, equilibria, periodic orbits. There could be more complicated things, they're called tori, so there could be two-dimensional surfaces on which you stay. They're very familiar from Hamiltonian dynamics, but they're more general than that. They have the advantage that they can be computed in finite time, so equilibrium you just compute, you have it, know it forever. For periodic orbits you just need one period and that usually computer can do. And for invariant tori, you have to work a little bit harder, but again, there are two numbers that specify any point on the torus, and that's what you have to solve. So our strategy will be to populate the space with these numbers, these objects, and this is the same strategy you use when you're trying to understand what happens on a unit interval, numbers between zero and one. What you do is you use a meter stick, so you divide it in intervals. So you find points, those points they call rational numbers. You can specify them with infinite precision. 
in dynamical system, we'll find periodic orbits, which will be isolated, but fully specified, you know, as exact as you want them to be numerically. And once you have a bunch of these points, then you can describe neighborhoods, and that means I can describe any state of the system with finite precision. So that's it. That's how I'll do it. We will now first learn how to find them, and then we'll learn how to give them names. Equilibria, there'll be points. Uh, periodic orbits, you know, point. There will be loops. There might be more complicated things called tori, which you will encounter, but not quite yet. And who knows? The road is open, but that will be the whole strategy.